Welcome to our monthly Board of Education meeting. We have a fine group of students here to lead us in the Pledge of the Flag. We're, we're now in open session. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Okay, 3.2, approval of the open session agenda. Is so, there a so move. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor of approving the agenda signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So approved. 3.3. It's a compliance board opinion summary that I'd like to read in open session so everyone's aware. Earlier this year, the Open Meetings Compliance Board received a complaint alleging violations by this board of the Open Meetings Act, largely concerning our procedure for entering closed sessions as well as the disclosures made prior to and after adjourning closed sessions. On May 17, 2018, the Open Meetings Compliance Board issued an opinion finding certain violations of the Open Meetings Act. Specifically, the client's compliance board opined that we were in violation of the act by failing to provide sufficient detail in our closing statement with regard to the topics to be discussed in closed session and the reasons for entering closed session. Failing to provide sufficient detail in our closed session summary found in the meeting minutes, which is a recap of the topics actually discussed in closed session. Failing to provide sufficient detail of the administrative functions performed by this board after recessing an open meeting into a closed session. Failing to follow the statutorily required procedure for entering closed session on June 13, 2017 and August 9, 2017. Providing incorrect information with regard to the start time of board meetings by providing the start time for the portion of the meeting that would remain open to the public rather than the time at which the board would convene an open session solely to vote to enter closed session and not posting each meeting on the board's website though each meeting was posted on the school's master calendar. The client's compliance board acknowledged that prior to receiving the opinion, we already began adjusting our practices to better comply with the law. In that regard, after receiving the complaint, we began using the form recommended by the compliance board for our closing statement, which prompts us to provide all of the detail required by the act. We have updated our website to reflect the start time of both our closed session and subsequent open session which allows members of the public to witness our vote to enter into a closed session if they so desire. We began the process of updating our website to ensure information about every scheduled meeting is available in multiple locations. And we have worked to increase the amount of detail provided in our closed session summaries. As a result, each of the violations found by the compliance board have already been addressed by this board and we will continue to work toward our goal of maximum transparency with the understanding that certain discussions and information must remain confidential. 3.4. Over the last month, we've lost two members of our Board of Education, Montgomery County Public Schools family. Stephen Michael Ray was 42, passed away in May. He was uh, County Sheriff's Office Deputy First Class and a coach at Mardella High School and a Mardella Springs Fireman Cadet. As a personal note, I coached Mardella soccer for four years, 2010 to 13, with Coach Ray. So it was a very difficult time for me and for everyone. Um, and Janie Tukey Wade, affectionately knows as Tukey, died in May 2018. For 54 years, she worked as an English translator for Wicomico County Public Schools. So it talks about her passion for education and tireless advocate for local Hispanic children and their parents, 54 years 
says it all. We'll, we'll miss them both. So in your own way, let's please recognize their passing. Thank you. 3.5, the typical highlight of the open board meetings. The student representatives reports to the board. So I think Nick and Rowan are gonna introduce the people that are gonna succeed them in this. And there's, you have others here. So I'm gonna turn it over to you guys. Rowan, yeah, sure. the floor is yours. All right. <laughs> One last time. Hopefully not. Hopefully we'll see you back here. Yeah. True, hopefully you not. You can have the floor whenever you return. Okay. <laughs> well, hello. Um, thank you for having us, board members and guests. Um, my name is Rowan Osman. Is this one? And I am the, um, or I was the former, I guess, uh, executive board president for James and Bennett High School. And today it is my pleasure to uh, um, introduce you to the new incoming executive board president for Bennett High. I'm sure many of you saw him at the, gym, um, at the award ceremony at Bennett last week. He was actually receiving the Lights of Literacy Award um, for his work helping older Pakistani women in this area assimilate to their new lives. Um, I'm sure you've also seen him at Optimus Contest. He's very involved, and that is Rothman Leacott. So he's um, an amazing person, extremely hardworking, and I know he'll make a great president. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you want to say anything. Uh, just really excited, and I'm really looking forward to meeting all of you and talking about the issues here at Recomico County. We look forward to having you. <laughs> Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Thank for you, a great year. Thank you, Absolutely. Thank you. And Nick, the floor is now yours. Good afternoon, board members. How are you guys doing today? Good. 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 Thank you. Well, this will be one of my will be my last time here in the Board of Education, which is very saddening. But it's time for a new year. So, our president of the executive board at Wycomico High School unfortunately could not be here, but I would like to introduce him today. His name is Darren Nelson. Um, substituting him today is Gia Bautista. She is the first vice president. Mm -hmm. She is incredibly bright. She, <laughs> she's also the president of the National Honor Society. She does Classics for Cause, and sh she was a finalist in the National Spelling Bee a couple years ago as well, which is all amazing things. I have full faith that Darren and the rest of the other executive board officers will do a great job at representing Wakamaka High School in the 2018-19 school year. So Gia's going to hand it off, and she will tell you the great things that are happening at Y High. Yes, so thank you guys for having me. I'm excited to be back for my second meeting. Um, so yeah. On May 19, Y High had its senior prom themed Black and Gold Masquerade at Dove Point. The memorable night started off in our school's auditorium for a grand march, and then the seniors and their guests danced the night away at Dove Point. Our freshmen recently participated in an opioid awareness assembly where they gathered in our auditorium to hear from former addicts and people in the medical field. The seminar was successful in teaching our freshmen about the dangers of drugs and the op opioid crisis in our area. From the Step Up program, Y High saw great statistics in the differences between non-Step Up students and Step Up participants. In comparing these groups, referrals were lower and GPAs and attendance were higher amongst the step-up students. Um, our seniors finally graduated on June 3rd, and I'm really proud to say that they raised over $1.6 million in scholarships, including Nick here. Um, <laughs> the ceremony went very smoothly, with Rachel Walker giving the scholarly address. Our band and choir also performed the alma mater and other selections between speeches given by Dr. Hanlon, Mr. Brady, and some senior class student government officers. We will dearly miss our class of 2018, oh. <laughs> but we cannot wait to see what they accomplish and how they will represent our school and our county in the future. Why High is finishing the school year strong with final exams coming this week. Though we are just ending this year, 
as a student government, we are also planning to create new traditions that start in the beginning of the next school year. Uh, first, we would like to partner with our PBIS at our school to create uh, teams um, that would be Team Blue and Team Gold that every student is randomly assigned to, kind of like Harry Potter houses. Like those houses, each team would be awarded points for having better attendance, less referrals, better grades, and better student participation in school events that would eventually lead to a team trophy at the end of the year. We are also looking to create a back-to-school carnival that would really get students excited for starting school again and would really bring our community together at Y High. We are really excited for the coming school year, Darren and I, even though we have yet to start summer and we can't wait to see our new ideas come to fruition. We hope everyone has a great summer and again, thank you for having us today. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. We appreciate uh, you leading us in the pledge as well, and we'd like to please recognize the other two students if you would, wouldn't mind introducing yourselves. We appreciate you being here. Oh, the representative from the other schools, Hello. I'm sorry. Parkside. Parkside, right? Park right. Yeah. Yes, we're Parkside. Hi, um, I'm Sarah Rungi, and this is Ashley Stearman. We're really sad our predecessor. Oh, closer. I'm sorry. <laughs> They're all just um, making faces at you. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you for having us. My name's Sarah Rungi, and I'm Ashley Stearman. And sadly, Colleen Simpkins, our predecessor, couldn't be here today, but I know she'd be really excited for handing it over to us, and she did such a great job this past year as SJA president. Um, this is Ashley, and she does field hockey and lacrosse and basketball, and she's a really dedicated Ram to our Ram fam, and she just brings so much spirit to school, and she's so dedicated, and I think she'll do great as co-SGA president. This is Sarah. I know she does, and I both do. We are an honor society, and at Parkside, we just had our awards, and then we both got a lot of awards from them. <laughs> Uh, we got, we did academic awards, we had sports awards, you know, just bringing in the Parkside spirit that, you know, we all love to have. Um, we're excited to end the school year, and everyone's very excited to come back, even though, you know, summer's great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. We look forward to Thank you. Next we look year. forward to have it. A good summer. And, and so there's a lesson for students in what just, that I just did because I'm reading from the book, but there were changes to the agenda that that's why we have technology that I didn't click on to. So <laughs> that's why I apologize. I did not know your names or say them out loud. So I've learned to use technology today. <laughs> Give me a gold star. Give me a gold star. So this, uh, we're in uh, 3.6, which is public comment. And we have two public comments for today. So first, uh, Ann Sukowski. I you, think everybody can hear these from up here. You well, we, it has to be recorded, recorded, so. Well, Nikki, move. Nikki. Can you move? Can you get that mic? Just take mic? the mic over there. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank the Wicomico County Board of Education for a piece of legislature that you passed a few months ago. We now have an elected school board in Wicomico County, which is nonpartisan. And you had a policy that there would be no partisan speeches in schools. But now that we have an elected school board that will be nonpartisan, I thought it would be a good idea that maybe the different schools, PTA meetings, would want to have forums for their PTA meetings so the parents could meet the candidates for the school board. So I made a call, talked to Nikki, and uh, she sort of took the ball and started bouncing with it, and the piece of legislature went, uh, was passed. So I want to thank you, but I hope now 
that the different uh, PTA, uh, PTA presidents, program chairmen, or principals will maybe use this as part of their programs for September and October so that the um, members of the community will meet the candidates for school board. Thank you. Thank you. And then also public comments, Mr. Dave Hanlon and Mr. George Whitehead. Did you give me the instructions from the superintendent? <laughs> I was waiting for someone to say something. <laughs> Good afternoon, uh, Superintendent Han Hanlon and members of the school board. David and I are here to update you on the community book drive. As you may know, it was April 19th through May 19th, the purpose of which were four, and we're going to update you on the, on the, on the results of this, uh, to collect new and gently used books for distribution to nonprofits and the school system that will put them to use. A primary interest is books for children birth to age eight. To solicit funds in order to purchase books uh, for children aged eight in Spanish, less than eight in Spanish, French, Korean, um, to promote reading and books, to engage broad elements of the community in helping promote reading, and to highlight the literacy, to liter uh, literacy event. Um, Dave is going to give you some statistics and I'm going to do a little bit of shouting out to people in, uh, in the school system who helped make this happen. So, Dave, let me turn it over to you. Thank you, George. Uh, 37 organizations joined this effort this last year. Um, the school system was a very heavy participant in that. Uh, there were drop sites located here in this building and at the central office. Plus, we had five high schools and uh, five public schools, rather, participated. And this alone is cause for celebration. Um, just to give you an idea, we collected a total this year of 13,500 books across the community, which is a 30% increase from last year, year one. 13,000 is really an amazing number. Um, of that, 4,100 approximately came from five schools in the Wicomico County public school system. We felt that was worthy of a special accolade. Um, just to break it down, Why High, Parkside, each collected about 200 books. Um, James M. Bennett High School, around 315. Mardella, 800. James M. Bennett Middle School, 2,616 books. So you all deserve an applause. Right. The, these books are going to go uh, to 25 different organizations around the community, not-for-profits and government entities. The school system is also receiving some of those books. Uh, the school system's uh, last count we had was 1,116 books are coming to the school system in the birth to five category for the Judy Centers, five to eights, and eight to 12. So 1,000 books are coming from the, from the community, brand new books to help support uh, your efforts. The library is a big recipient along with an interesting project from the uh, Wicomico County Detention Center where they have set up a program where, where the folks who are there, who are assigned there by the courts, can continue to read to their children. So there's a children's books are going there. Um, Christian Shelters, Quota Club, Coastal Hospice, Salvation Army, Stone Grove Apartments, Community of Joy to support the Community Free Library movement in the, in the community were all beneficiaries. So it, um, it's a great, it's a great uh, to be part of this effort and uh, thank you to the school system for making it possible. And we'll name some names right now if that's okay. Um, some folks that are actually here, if you may wonder who helped coordinate the, the schools, and I'd like to thank Micah Stauffer who did that. Micah, thank you very much. Um, the principals, obviously, at the schools, but then the media specials at the schools, uh, James McCrawby, Angela Langdon, Aaron Neal, Karen Scott, and Kara Brown. Um, the drop-off site was also the Wellness 5K run, and that was Vince Pavick, so we want to thank Vince. And now we got all these books, and then we got to sort them. Um, and that, if you wondered, if you looked at 13,000 books and wondered how you could sort them in about a couple hours, uh, it's really our media specialists who helped do that along with the library and a few, <clears throat> a few volunteers, right, Dave? 
Um, so I'd like to thank Ruth Malone and Carl Lewis Les Collette, uh, who really helped um, get the folks there to help us sort these books. And um, what we have here is a present for you. Um, these are the last box of new books for birth to five, and I think we're exactly in the right building to leave these. <laughs> so I don't know who gets them, but there you go. So thank you very much, and thank the school system for all their support. Right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both for your work. Thank you very much. Thank you. Three point seven superintendent's report, Dr. Hanlon. Okay, I have a few things. I uh, want to start off. I think a few of the students mentioned this, but I just want to highlight that we had, over the course of this year, six very successful graduations. One mid-year at Evening High School, and then five spring graduations, including Evening High School, and of course, Mardella, Bennett, Parkside, and Y High. Um, with a total of, I believe, 917 graduates, 917 graduates, which is just incredible. Um, don't have a final count on the scholarship money yet, but we've been, you know, just sort of thinking about what was said at graduation. We know we're well over $10 million in, in scholarship funds, so we look forward to getting those uh, exact figures later in the fall. And just want to commend Mr. Stauffer and his work with our high school principals and the high school principals for very successful graduations. With such large crowds, it's often hard to maintain crowd control while you're also uh, working with students, giving speeches. There were exceptional speeches this year, just very, very well done. So I wanted to start off highlighting that. And of course, I know board members are very well aware of how successful the graduations were because obviously you handed the diplomas to students, which um, is a very uh, worthwhile experience, I know. Um, I also want to highlight some additional, we, uh, last month we highlighted some um, administrative transfers and promotions. I want to highlight a few of those now. We will um, be providing a full report of those um, transfers and promotions and new hires by the end of the day. But just to highlight a few, um, Dr. Renee Hall will be transferring from the principal of North Salisbury to the new supervisor of reading based upon the vacancy there. And we will be, uh, Dave Harris will be transferring from Fruitland Primary to being the principal of North Salisbury Elementary School. We congratulate Lisa Forbush on her promotion from assistant principal at Wicomico Middle School to the principal of Fruitland Primary School. Also, we congratulate uh, Command, Kamindi, I can never say his name, Kimmy, Kimmy Bins on his promotion <laughs> from the Dean of Students at James M. Bennett High School to Assistant Principal at James M. Bennett High School. And Jason Capabianco from his promotion from, the, from a teacher at Wicomico High School to the Dean of Students at James M. Bennett. We also um, are, have a promotion in Karen Parsons from Assistant Principal of East Salisbury Elementary to the Supervisor of Accountability and Assessment. And then Tara Parsons will be replacing her as assistant principal at East Salisbury Elementary. That's a promotion for Tara. She is currently a teacher at Glen Avenue. Another transfer, Dr. Kathy Vale from Choices Academy to the principal of Glen Avenue Elementary. As we all know, Lil Giddens, longtime administrator in our system, has announced her retirement at Glen Avenue. We will be posting for the principal position at Choices Academy. Another promotion from assistant principal, excuse me, from dean of students at Wicomico High School to assistant principal at Parkside High School is Mr. Billy Whitty. Um, another promotion from teacher at Salisbury Middle to assistant principal of Salisbury Middle School is Mrs. Jennifer Mudd. And a few other promotions. Keisha Cook is promoted from teacher at Choices Academy to the dean of students at Parkside High School. Chris McLaughlin is a promoted from teacher of Prince Street Elementary to the Dean of Students at Prince Street Elementary. Matthew Curtis, promoted from teacher at Pittsville Elementary and Middle to the Dean of Students at Pinehurst Elementary. And Cindy Becker 
is promoted from teacher of Westside Primary to assistant principal of our Wicomico Early Learning Center. And finally, we welcome James Hessen back to our county. James was a former dean of students with us. He has been a, an assistant principal at Del Mar, Delaware, and is coming back to us as assistant principal at West Salisbury Elementary. So, sounds like a lot. Um, the full list will be coming out later this afternoon. So we congratulate all of our um, promotions in this round of administrative transfers and promotions. Has Delegate Anderton arrived? We may be doing this without Delegate Anderton. So we had a very special treat that came to us from the governor. Um, the day after, I believe, Mr. Harner, the day after our evening high school graduation, we received, Mr. Harner received, a proclamation from the governor, I'll hand that off to you, um, celebrating our 25th anniversary of our Wicomico Evening High School program. And so, Mr. Harner, would you like to come forward and we will present this to you on behalf of the governor. Carl Anderton was going to try to be with us, but obviously he's not arrived, so we will um, present this. So it reads, Wicomico Evening High School Greetings. Be it known that on behalf be it known that on behalf of the citizens of this state, in recognition of a special tribute to honor the occasion of the 25th anniversary of Wicomico County Evening High School, with grateful appreciation to the instructors, staff, students, and parents from past and present who are proudly celebrating this important milestone of success. And as our citizens join in expressing our congratulations, great respect, and best wishes for a rewarding and memorable event we are pleased to confer upon you this governor's citation. So it isn't a proclamation, it's actually a governor's citation. So I apologize for that. Um, presented on behalf of the governor. So Dave, as the administrator of Evening High School, we present that to you and we congratulate you and many other administrators who've come before you on the great work of Evening High School. <laughs> I just wanted to uh, um, I think a part of the citation I think that was most prudent is both uh, staff administrators past and present it uh, took a commitment from past board members and administrators in this county to recognize the need in the beginning and to sustain uh, that effort throughout the years uh, board members that attended our commencement received 25th anniversary uh, 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 kind of commemorative key change key chains and uh, but for those who are not able to attend I just want to be able to uh, you. provide you with as well Mr. Murray thank you. all right thank you in, in January in Jan did you not no. I thought you did in January <laughs> you were my bad <laughs> all right. you erase that part from the record Paul okay <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you, you. Dave. Okay. And Paul, while you're there, don't sit down. All right. We're going to move right on to Extra Mile Awards. Okay. This is uh, one of my favorite parts of the uh, Board of Education meeting um, and one of our best parts of the uh, each month because we get to recognize two outstanding employees of Wicomico County Public Schools. Our first Extra Mile Award winner just arrived just in time. Uh, he's nominated for the Extra Mile Award because he gives 110% of his job. He works extra hours even late into the evening, planning and working on lessons plans for the following day. He's super willing to learn new and updated information about physical education. He always takes interns and willing to do whatever it is 
he can to make them into the best possible new teacher. He is all about team building and working as a team to best support students and employees, and he's also willing to participate in extra groups that are outside of the school hours. Now, we're talking about Dr. Harlan Eagle from Chipman Elementary School. The last four years, by the way, he's also put together a 5K race for the WCBOE Wellness Club, and it's all volunteer work for Dr. Eagle. Never complains about going to work, always going with an open mind and open heart to whatever the day brings, and he has done this for over 32 years for Wicomico County. So we want to bring up to the front of the room Dr. Harlan Eagle from Chipman Elementary. Again, congratulate Dr. Harlan Eagle and Mrs. Perry from Chipman Elementary School for earning the Extra Mile Award for the month of May. And we're not done. We have one more. Our next Extra Mile Award winner is uh, an instructional assistant at Northwestern Elementary School. Her name is Rebecca Inslee. She is a special education instructional assistant. She willingly does everything asked of her at the school and more. Now, assistants often get moved around from here to there, when, uh, but, but she's always there to help out staff and subs who need help. Now, occasionally, assistants complain about the sudden changes in their schedule that occur, but Becky never does, doing what she is asked with a smile on her face and also making the best of it. She has worked closely with an autistic student this year, and he has made terrific gains in part by the love and care that she has shown him. In addition, she attends every after-school event, every PTA event, and jumps right in to help with what needs to be done. And each month, the Northwestern does a food distribution for families in need, and Becky is there helping to organize and dis distribute the food. Uh, distribute the food. Becky is a wonderful asset to Northwestern and Wicomico County Schools and truly goes the extra mile. She was nominated by her principal, Debbie Angby. So we're going to bring down Rebecca Inslee. Is she here? Yes. And from Northwestern Elementary School. Thank you very much. And finally, we have Mrs. Courtney Jones to provide you with our grants report. Good afternoon. During the month of May, we have submitted four grants totaling $225,584, one to the Community Foundation for the Eastern Shore, promoting success through, meeting, through reading um, at Fruitland Pri Primary. We also have had two grants for um, wellness grants that have been funded, um, one for $16,150, the other for two hundred and three. 
$1,334. And also the Maryland State Department of Education, the Quality Teacher Incentive Grant for $31,000. We had a very busy month in the month of May. We submitted 12 grants totaling $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1
So you've had time to read those or their second readings. And so if there's a motion to approve, upon the recommendation of the superintendent, is there a motion to approve the consent items? Move to approve consent items. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. 6.1. As per, bill, as per Senate Bill 145 approved by Governor Hogan on April 26, 2016, the Wicomico County Board of Education will change from appointed board to an elected board beginning with the November 6, 2018 election. The new law related to Wicomico County Annotated Code of Maryland Education Section 3-13A-06 reads, at the first meeting of the county board in December of each year, the county board shall elect a chair and vice chair from among the members. Is there a motion to confirm the continuation of the existing officers until the December 10, 2018 monthly meeting? So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Are they willing to serve? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're willing to serve. <laughs> Great question. <laughs> Uh, 6.2, during the May meeting of the Curriculum, Curriculum Council, the Shakespeare play, The Merchant of Venice, was reviewed. This play would be added to the approved list of supplemental texts and could be utilized in grade 10 English language arts classes. This play has been reviewed by students, the instructor, and other individuals. In addition, we piloted in one 10th grade English class this school year. The council unanimously recommended that this text move forward to the board for consideration for approval. Upon the recommendation of the superintendent is our motion to approve the Merchant of Venice for use in grade 10 English language arts classes for first reading. And move it looks like, I'm oh, sorry. Move to approve. Second. And there's a second. Discussion, Mrs. Malone. Good afternoon. I am not Ellen Harlan. She was <laughs> unable to be here today, but uh, she asked if I would present this item and I was enthusiastic in my volunteering to do so. This is a play that would be added as an approved play. It would provide a Shakespeare choice for our teachers and for our students. Uh, we are not removing Julius Caesar. We're just adding Merchant of Venice to that choice. The teacher that piloted it gave us a spirited uh, uh, presentation about the success, the deep critical thinking that her students engaged in, and the overall um, enthusiasm for Shakespeare that having piloted this particular play uh, generated in her classes. So uh, Curriculum Council was very much in favor. Um, this is a play with uh, some degree of controversy and she um, talked to us about how she covered that and why she thought this play is an excellent choice for our times. And um, I am also an enthusiastic supporter of adding this to our approved listing in 10th grade. Have you received any negative feedback at all? We have that? not. You know what I found interesting when I read some, through some of these were when it's this theme of the book, the different takes people had. One was the book was about discrimination. One is mercy is preferable to revenge. Um, What's the other one? Uh, social justice, yes. which I all th I thought was excellent because this obviously is going to provoke a lot of thought in in students' minds. In my opinion, as a as a layman, not a teacher, but that's what I found interesting. Very much so, and uh, that was one of the reasons why she wanted to pilot it, and that she was so interested in having it added to our proof listing. Any questions? And this is also for first reading. So if anybody has any comments. They can be voted final. That is correct, and we do have a copy of the play. Uh, so anyone who wishes to uh, review it there can certainly do so, uh, or there are plenty of um, summaries that are online. Perfect. So are we ready to vote on the first reading? We've got a motion and a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. I will relay that to Mrs. Harlan. Thank you. 6.3, during the May meeting of the Curriculum Council, a new textbook entitled Auto Collision Repair and Refinishing 
was reviewed. This text would be utilized for all levels, ATEX, level one, level two, and collision repair. This book has been reviewed by students, the instructor, and individuals serving in the program advisory committee. The council unanimously recommended that this text move forward to the board for consideration for approval. Upon recommendation of the superintendent is our motion to approve auto collision repair and refinishing for use in collision repair for first reading. So move. Move. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Ashby. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'll speak briefly about this text. Uh, for many years, um, we have used an online curriculum um, known as ICAR. This was a, an idea of students, that they wanted a up-to-date text. We've never had a uh, paper text in this program. And we looked at two, the one we selected, has a 2018 copyright that basically covers everything that we do in um, auto collision from structural repair, non-structural repair, refinishing. Um, it did have waterborne finishes which several years ago we became an EPA certified green shop so we do use waterborne finishes and this text had it. The other um, pieces in, in addition to the material it covered, it did have lots of online resources that were very engaging not only to the students but also our instructor so we are excited to um, make this purchase it will be with FY19 funds and I have an instructor who asked me before I came when can I get my materials so I told him <laughs> hopefully by the end of June this will be approved at the next meeting um, but we are excited we did a full review with program advisory minute uh, members um, also some other industry representatives, students and parents, and this book came back with glowing recommendations. Any questions for Mr. Ashby? I'd just like to add that uh, as a part of the Curriculum Council, I was on that uh, panel, and the um, feedback that you got from parents and students was fantastic. Mm -hmm. They're all highly rated, so. And I saw also the teacher indicated that most people, when you think about uh, uh, mechanics and things of that nature don't think about a textbook but he was very pleased that this textbook would fit exactly what he needed to refer mm -hmm. to with his students I know there are a couple of comments about costs is that just um, people maybe not really understanding the cost of textbooks these it's days the nature of the beast yeah. with, yeah. especially with uh, technology and industry text mm -hmm. um, Within Wicomico County and at Parkside CT, we're doing the state MSDE professional development for auto collision again this year. And this will be a book that we have um, out for people to take a look at. It is an expensive text, but uh, in addition, the resources that we get with this text, as well as ongoing support for the next six years, makes it a, makes it a good value in what's out there right now. Is that roughly the estimated useful life of a textbook like this? Roughly, six the technology years? changes quite quickly, uh, especially with auto collision. So, six years would be what we would have as as far as an expected life. Any other questions? Okay, we have a motion and second. Ready to approve. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. First reading approved. 6.5, during the May meeting of the Curriculum Council, we reviewed a software product called My Access for Use in the Secondary Schools for the Purpose. I skipped one, didn't I? Yes, you did. I did, I'm sorry. 6.4, I could tell, I could feel the eyes going. This way, so I knew I had done wrong, I'm sorry. During the May meeting of the Curriculum Council, a new textbook entitled CNC Programming was reviewed. This text would be utilized for all levels, ATEX, Level 1, Level 2, in high-performance manufacturing. This book has been reviewed by students, the instructor, and the individuals serving in the program advisory committee. The council unanimously recommended that this text move forward to the board for consideration for approval. Upon the recommendation of the superintendent, is there a motion to approve CNC programming for use in high-performance manufacturing for first reading? So moved. There's a second? Second. Mr. Ashby. Okay. Um, this text is for our high performance manufacturing program. Um, within this 
program. We have several books that act as resources. We do not have currently what I would consider an elementary or introductory text for CNC programming and especially uh, GNM code. Uh, we do teach our kids to write um, code to perform both positioning and, and milling operations. Uh, this book is a, it's actually a Project Lead the Way uh, book, and we do have our Project Lead the Way engineering program. But we had difficulty finding a book that was um, one of an introductory nature, that had good graphics, that showed setups, that showed elementary programming, um, and that was also engaging to the students. This book did fit the bill. Uh, the students thought that uh, information was presented logically and in a way that they could understand it. Uh, it was clear and precise with, and it wasn't what they would say, it wasn't wordy. Uh, they did like the pictures and the diagrams. Um, and it also had challenge questions at the beginning of each chapter which kind of framed their thoughts before they got into a chapter. I don't think this is a text that we will assign and say, you know, you need to read this chapter. We will use it as a resource. Um, because we do like to do lots of application, but it is a um, book that is introductory and we think will fit the bill quite nicely with students beginning our program in ATEX. Um, it's also a reference that can be used for grade 11 or 12 as well, so it, uh, it fits a variety of needs. It was reviewed, um, as mentioned, by local uh, CNC uh, managers, uh, Warwick student, as well as a local employee in machining, uh, many students, teachers, and a parent, um, and the reviews came back very, very positive. So. Any questions for Mr. Ashby? Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, passed on first reading. Thank you. Thank you. Now 6.5. During the May meeting of the Curriculum Council, we reviewed the software product called My Access for use in the secondary schools for the purpose of providing quality and timely feedback on student writing. We heard from one pilot teacher who presented very positive results and comments about the impact it is having on our students and their writing. This was included as part of the application process of the Striving Readers Grant submitted to the MSDE. Council unanimously recommended that it move forward to the board for consideration and approval pending grant funding. Upon the recommendation of the superintendent is our motion to approve my access for first reading. Is there a motion? <clears throat> Second? Second. Mrs. Malone, Ms. McSorley. Good afternoon once again. Um, this is um, somewhat unusual because usually we have a funding source before we bring things to you. Uh, this was a major component in our application for the Striving Readers Grant and we have not yet heard um, about funding. Um, we are fairly confident we will get some funding but we don't know how much that is. And you'll notice that this has quite a large price tag. It is artificial intelligence. It does provide timely feedback for students and their research indicates that most students will uh, revise and edit a piece of writing upwards of six times before it is actually submitted to the teacher for grading. It doesn't mean that we're taking the teacher out of the equation. It simply means that we can have students do more writing, we can have them get timely feedback, and that helps the conversation that the teacher has. Uh, again, um, it, you will notice that it says it is not funded because we are waiting for it um, in terms of the Striving Readers Grant. And for more information, I will uh, look to my great colleague in middle school, ELA, Mrs. McSorley. Thank you. Um, as she mentioned, um, it allows the teachers to uh, put their own prompts into the program um, and allows the kids to get automatic feedback on their writing. Um, when the teachers implemented this in the pilot, they called it a game changer because it allows them to conference with students while not waiting for other students to just sit, you know, waiting for a teacher to come to them that they can actually get feedback and the program provides them with suggestions um, on how to correct mistakes that they do make in their writing. Uh, so we're really excited about it and hope that we do get the funding so that we can um, implement it as part of our writing program. Who does the, uh, or where does the automatic feedback come from? Is it like, 
online with a teacher and she's going to say, no, you can't do that? or It's actually artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. So it's actually... So um, a machine is telling us we're not that's, doing it. Okay. That's correct. Mm -hmm. um, and that technology has been around for quite some time, but it's becoming more and more perfected um, so that the feedback is quite good. And in fact, um, we know that in many other instances um, where there are high stakes assessments, writing samples are indeed being scored by artificial intelligence. Do teachers like it? Um, I think that teachers like it from the standpoint of being able to really improve student writing in a way that is effective and, and timely because a human reader can only read so fast and provide feedback um, so rapidly and this provides it almost instantaneously so that a student can indeed engage in a lot of revision <coughs> and get a lot of feedback immediately that a teacher simply can't do because they, they're they slower than a machine. Can you I, explain I love the right, I drive this program nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Can you explain what kind of feedback you get? Is it, is it grammatical subject material? Is it, I mean, what what actually does it assess? It, act it actually gives um, several. One of which is uh, conventions, um, organization. It looks at organization and content. Um, I know the one we were looking at gave options for sentence structure. Um, the other nice component of the program is it provides a report for the student to see where their pattern, patterns of mistakes are and allows the teacher to do a report of the whole student um, group. So small group instruction can occur because the teacher can say, okay, these students have similar errors. I'm going to pull that small group and work with them on this particular um, area so that we're not, uh, it's an ability to differentiate their writing. So a teacher can set up what, uh, what he or she is looking for mm -hmm. And and a pro, um, and as the student responds or writes, it'll it evaluates based on what input from the teacher. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, and then actually you can do a printout of the, the the school and the county, so you could see, for example, in my position, I'm going to look at the county data and say, okay, we have a weakness in this particular area. Then I will be able to provide PD to my teachers to then focus on those areas. And what level of um, um, skill is it? Can you set that level for the students themselves? Well, it would be based on the prompt that's included. So if the teacher puts in the prompt, that prompt is based on the standards that they teach for their grade. So the teacher puts the, gr the prompt in based on the standards that they're doing or the literature that they're teaching, and then that would... Um, and the standards that they have to cover for their grade level. Is it, I'm, I'm sorry for asking so many questions, okay. but it's fascinating. Mm -hmm. it, it, is it, can it be used in, for students that have special needs or perhaps um, maybe ELL students also? Actually, they, um, they, there is an entire component that talks about how supportive they are in ELL, mm -hmm. and we've looked at that. It allows them to get feedback in their own language. Mm -hmm which is oh, wow. a huge um, advantage for teachers when they're trying to work with students in writing and you can't work with them in their own language. It allows them to get that feedback. So if they, if they write in English, but it might respond in their Correct. native language. It might say you have a run-on oh, okay. sentence, but it, it corrects it and gives them feedback in their language. Thank you. Mm -hmm. hey, a lot of times uh, a student uh, will write something and each one has a different individual way of doing something, uh, a writer's technique. Does this program correct the point where it takes the individuality away from that writing? Well, no, only from the standpoint of um, format. It may, it may say that there's a grammatical error, and that may have been a stylistic choice on the part of the student. Um, but no, it, it isn't trying to, um, for instance, take John Steinbeck and make him Ernest Hemingway. No. Mm -hmm. um, but um, it certainly is looking at effective writing and effective communication of ideas. Fulton, you had a question? No, not a question. I just think the motion should clarify that it is subject to grant funding. Yeah, it does say council 
Uh, well, but it's not in the motion, actually. So you're saying we should include subject to grant funding in the motion, if that's your wish, right? Because that is the recommendation. Okay. Well, let's make a. Well, I'll make amend. a motion that we amend the motion to include that uh, it's dependent on funding, grant funding. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All and all in favor of the amendment, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Now we can vote on the motion. If you have no more questions for the ladies here. All right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. And as always, thank you so much for your support of our instructional programs. You're welcome. Really interesting. Six point six. Upon the recommendation of the superintendent, is there a motion to approve the fiscal year two thousand nineteen educational facilities master plan EFMP as reviewed and discussed in the May fifteen, two thousand eighteen work session for submission to the state? So moved. The second. Second. This is Ashby. Mr. Malone. Welcome. Dr. Hanlon, President Fitzgerald. Board members, uh, today I'm representing Mr. Aki. Uh, he's attending a regional facility planners meeting in Baltimore today, and I'm sure is having a really, really great time <laughs> learning about the state's implementation of the 21st uh, Century School Facilities Act. Um, I know he'd much rather be here in front of you. Um, as you're aware, and as was mentioned, there was a draft of the fiscal year 2019 EFMP reviewed in a work session held on May 15th. Um, since this date, there have been no major changes. Uh, there was a list provided of some minor items with the final master plan submitted. Um, several facility needs were highlighted in relation to projected enrollments, special initiatives, and major capital needs. Uh, the enrollment bubble was reviewed and its impending impact on the high schools. Uh, the top four capital projects identified were Del Mar's limited renovation, uh, replacement Beaver Run School, uh, the multi-systemic renovation at Parkside, as well as a feasibility study for Mardella Middle and High School. Um, a new systemic needs index was introduced, which prioritizes and fills the systemic funding bucket. Uh, an initiatives bucket was introduced, including top priorities like the art school, uh, universal pre-K, and safety. Um, if approved by the board today, the EFMP will be submitted to the state, uh, state specifically the interagency com commission on public school construction before July 1st and uh, will be posted on the board's website. And I stand for any questions you may have. Are we um, technically approving this as a uh, new plan or are we just amending it the previous year's plan? You're technically approving it as a new, new plan. plan. Okay. Any other questions? If not, I assume you're ready to vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Six point seven. The Food and Nutrition Services Department is submitting the attached proposed budget for school year 2018-19 and narrative for fiscal year 2018. The budget presented reflects a balanced budget with eight million four ninety one nine hundred thirty eight thousand of revenues and expenditures and an appropriation of two hundred eighty one thousand six hundred thirty eight dollars from the food service fund balance and a transfer of four hundred fifty thousand from the general fund. This general fund transfer is a decrease of one hundred fifty thousand from fiscal year two thousand eighteen. The Food and Nutrition Services Department is requesting the board to approve an appropriation of $281,638 from the Food Service Fund Balance, $150,000 for Phase 2 of a three-phase, three-year major equipment replacement program, and $131,683 for a balanced budget. So that, that's a required motion from us, right? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Gosley. Good afternoon, Dr. Hanlon, Mr. Fitzgerald, board members. Um, you've seen the uh, attachment, uh, the summary of the food service program from the previous year. Um, I would like to um, 
add to the community, the CEP, the community eligibility provision, that um, the approval will be based upon um, MSDE approving us to move those three schools as CEP schools. Um, the CEP program is a program, if you're not aware of it, is a program that allows, if the school qualifies, allows all the students in the school to get breakfast and lunch at no charge to the student. Um, currently, we have five schools in the program, and we are um, hoping that we can add three more schools next year. Uh, that will help our parents out a great deal with not having to worry about um, lunch money, um, not having to worry about phone calls on my behalf from Mr. Butler that they have a negative balance. <laughs> um, it, it will be a great asset to our students. Um, the paid lunch equity tool that we have talked about each year, um, as I said in the uh, summary, this year there's been provisions made that if you have a fund balance, you don't need to raise your lunch meal prices. So um, another plus to our parents that um, we're not requesting the board to raise our lunch meal prices or our breakfast prices for next year. Our equipment uh, program phase one um, with the support of our facilities department um, will be completed by the start of school and we will begin phase two for uh, next school year. <coughs> Throughout the year or during the school year, um, the state approached us about adding some schools to our MMFA program. And our MMFA program is the Maryland Meals for Achievement and that's another program where um, <clears throat> students receive breakfast at no cost to them, again, if the school qualifies. And um, mid, closer to the end of the school year in May, they approached us and, and we were glad to add uh, three new sites as a Maryland Mills for Achievement program. And that would be Westside Primary, Fruitland Primary, and Fruitland Intermediate. Um, we're hoping to add a new position to help us um, reach our do more outreach into our community to our parents it will be a farms and sales position um, and that will assist us with implementing food service marketing programs and again outreach to our families uh, regarding the farms applications and the farms process and I stand for any questions Mr. Gosser what's the average percentage of the kids who take advantage of the breakfast and lunch at the schools that we currently have um, in our CEP schools, historically, we have about 70% of our CEP schools where children are particip participating. Um, participation runs, it varies from um, 60 to 75%. Are any idea why uh, the others don't, why all don't participate in it? Why we don't have 100%? <laughs> Uh, that's uh, uh, that is a very good question um, and hopefully our sales and marketing position will help us with that um, in speaking with with many kids um, some of them have a preconceived notion um, and our goal is to help uh, remove that preconceived notion about uh, food service school food service I mean it we are got it by USDA guidelines. So we can't make our food taste like and look like McDonald's food, but we, we do our best to, the, to try to make it as pleasant to them within the guidelines that we have to follow. Do we have any schools above the intermediate level that where breakfast and lunches are free? Another, any secondary schools, I guess is my question. Uh, we don't have any currently. Uh, we have secondary schools that qualify, um, and we've struggled for a few years trying to get secondary schools in the MMFA program. And part of it is is a logistical piece. Um, and talking to many of the principals, they are sort of apprehensive because of the time that students are allowed in the building and the time that staff is allowed in the building um, to sort of help guide the students to where they need to be. Do we have other questions? Is this a typical appropriation from year to year? I don't recall what we did last year. I mean, 
It's down. It's down. Yes. yes. Okay. Um, when I came on board, the, you're, are you talking about the fund balance transfer? Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, when I came on board, the fund balance transfer that was about seven years ago was about seven hundred and fifty thousand okay. dollars a year. And so the proposed budget is actually lower on expenditures than it is currently. Okay. So make sure I'm reading this right. Very good. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. It's passed. Thank you. Thank you. Six point eight. Upon the superintendent's recommendation, is there a motion to approve the budget transfers as presented by the controller for the month of June two thousand and eighteen? Move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Reed. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, President Fitzgerald, Vice President Malone, Dr. Hanlon, board members. You have before you a list of year-end transfers that have been submitted by various directors and department managers. These transfers represent year-end alignment of funds to provide for year-end projects and enable our department managers to bring their budgets within alignment for year-end closing. And I stand ready to answer any questions you have. Sure. Other questions? No, I've already seen that. None? Okay. That was easy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I assume you're ready to vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay, it's passed. Thank you. Jesse, yes, sir. keep up the good work. Thank you, sir. <laughs> 6.9 personnel matters is provided as a matter of information so board members reports we'll start with mr palmer this time to the right uh during our last county council meeting there's some questions that came up about uh, procedures for purchase cards and mr ford made an offer for uh personnel if they were really interested to come over and out of the spirit of transparency to take some time and go through the procedure that he uses uh, when we make uh, purchases with our uh, purchase cards. I did take the advantage of doing that and it was an excellent three hours spent. I've seen what happens when somebody takes that little card and goes <coughs> out somewhere to get something uh, when the receipt comes back where it's inputted into the system where it's scanned into the system where the accountant puts it into the budget and codes it as to which type of an item it is and it's working out pretty good and they're making a modification now so that they can take out food so if anybody should want to see a particular item uh, they can go they'll be able to go right into it and find out so that's a it's a tremendous uh, program uh, I recommend that anybody in county government, if they wish to see our uh, program, they're more than welcome to come over and view it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Palmer. Mr. Murray? Yes, good afternoon. I, uh, first of all, would like to start out in thanking everyone. Um, of course, the students we congratulate, but also all of the staff involved in this school year as we come to an end. Uh, I have being new here on the board since September uh, it's been a, a wonderful experience for me but particularly when we hear the reports from our SGA students and all of these uh, board meetings I was able to attend all of the graduations in Wicomico County except the adult one and participated in three of them and the special part for me was actually being able to congratulate each graduate for all their years all their hard work and you know in shaking the hands and also wondering in my own mind thinking perhaps I have just shaken the hand of one of our future presidents maybe of our country it is it is so rewarding and there's so much hard work um, that our students do but also our staff in this county and it's without said you know by I know myself and I'm sure everyone else thank you 
Mr. Fitzgerald, we get to hear directly from you this month, which is a blessing. Well, <clears throat> thank you. I want to thank you for stepping in since April. Uh, it's been a hard, hard thing to do, sit back and not be able to say anything. Uh, but a week ago Friday, they gave me this little thing here that allows me to talk. I'm going to keep that for a few more weeks, and then well, they're going to make an evaluation on me. But I kept up with what was going on. And, uh, I, again, this organization, and I hope everybody's looking, the WCBOE is the best in the state of Maryland, barring none. Just look at the students that graduated and what they've done and what they are doing. It's a, it's an honor to set up here and represent these students, especially the ones that don't have the support at home that needs our support. It's an honor to do that. It was an honor, just like Mr. Murray said, to be there. I only did one this year because I was just returning back from Baltimore. But I had the pleasure of being at JMB to pass out the uh, diplomas with Mr. Turner. And I, it went very well. So to you students sitting here, two of you are going to be replacing the current presidents. All I can say to you is, fill those shoes, even though they might be big, fill them for next year. Use your ideas, because that's what it's all about. It's about you all. What we set up here and do, it's not for Don Fitzgerald. It's for the students of Wicomico County. So with that said, uh, just like I told the county executive yesterday, at North Salisbury, I got my voice back. You're in trouble. <laughs> so, again, uh, I have to watch how long I talk. But, again, uh, we're going forward, and uh, it's an honor, Gene, to work with you and for what you do for this board. I want to thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're certainly welcome. It's an honor to serve with you. And we're glad you're talking again. Mr. Brown. Uh, I had an opportunity to attend a couple of the awards programs. I went to the CTE program, and it was very interesting. I've attended them before, but it's also great to see that the same kind of successes are continuing. Uh, many of the kids who graduate from that program either go on to uh, further their uh, studies in that particular area, or they already have jobs. Uh, are, which is much in demand, and a number of them were had been out doing their field work, and they had their representatives from their uh, positions that they were working for were there uh, congratulating them as well. So it's good that we have the CTE program, and I think if we can continue to look at what the community needs and bring those kinds of programs to the school system, that will be an asset to the county. Also an opportunity to go to Mardella, a small school, but gosh, those kids received all kinds of scholarships, lots of money. It'd be interesting to see how much money all total uh, those kids, uh, not only in Mardella but across the county, received in, in scholarships, and that number seems to grow each year. Uh, third thing is, uh, gosh, I went to the um, uh, program that we have for our retirees. Some of those folks are going to be hard to replace when you've got somebody that's been there 50 years. They haven't been there 50 years because they don't care. They've been there 50 years because they enjoy what they're doing and they uh, feel a personal interest in the county and working with kids. Uh, we had a couple of them that were like 45 years, I think, another 40 years. And to get those caliber of folks, it's going to be a task for the administration here at the central office because those individuals were, uh, were well known in their respective schools and their communities as well. Uh, the other thing is I went to the um, awards recognition uh, at uh, James and Bennett last uh, week, and gosh, again, I think, Roran, you were there, but to see all the things, not only the students are doing, but also staff, 
as well uh, throughout the county, but not only in the school, because I believe one of our um, awards went to uh, Jay Ishroom. Uh, and those are people who not only do things for the kids in school, but they do things for kids outside in, in the community. So that's a, a big plus for our school system. So again, uh, it's been a pleasure coming back in this kind of capacity and seeing the successes that you're having and want you to continue the good work. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Mr. Turner? Sure, I'd just like to uh, thank our facilities group, or at least that's what I'm gonna call you today for the, <laughs> the tour at uh, Westside this past week. I think that school is gonna have a really great impact to that community. I think our county executive and county council missed a really terrific opportunity to have an even bigger impact when they did not approve what our original request was, which is probably twice the size of what it is. But beautiful school, amazing, and it was really fun to go out and see it. Thank you. I just want to wish everybody a, uh, a fun and safe summer, too. Thank you, Mr. Turner. So I've been referring to my board report as Gene's Travels, but uh, so... <laughs> I did many of the same events as my colleagues, the service awards, amazing, the um, graduations to get to shake that many hands of some fine young students from our system. Um, I did a guest reader at Willard's Elementary in early June and read to a kindergarten class, which is always invigorating because I always ask them for questions and then they just fire them at you and it's, that's just great. <laughs> the West Salisbury tour was absolutely outstanding as Mr. Turner talked about. That's a great new school for us. The year-end awards recognizing retirees, students. Um, yesterday at the North Salisbury is the spotted turtle, right? That <laughs> the governor came down for. That was amazing. Those, what those young people could do on, with composure to stand up there and read all those things and go through all that and make those presentations was amazing. That was the biggest part of it. But I guess the highlight for my board report is that in early May, I got a call from Junior Achievement because I've done that before, and they said, would you like to do a Junior Achievement? I said, no, really, I'm pretty jammed up. Well, I think you'll want to do this for this class in Del Mar. It's a third-grade class. Kayla Malone teaches it, which is my daughter-in-law, and they don't have a Junior Achievement teacher for that week. So what obvious answer could I give? But, yes, okay, I'll do that. <laughs> so it was wonderful, but here's the part that was educational for me, and Every morning I'm up at 5 in the morning cutting up the little things that, that you do and making sure that I've got a lesson plan and figuring all this out. And then my adrenaline's pumping as I'm riding there, and it's like 45 minutes, and then you're, like, relieved when you leave. And it took me to the third morning I'm doing this, and my wife Donna gets up, and I tell her what's going on. I said, man, this is a lot of work. She said, really? That's what teachers do every day, dear. So bang, you know, right? really, that's the honest truth. It just hit me, like, this is what that our teachers and I'm sure supervisors, administrators, you're doing every single day. I'm doing it for five days, 45 minutes each day. And honestly, when I left there, I, like, I felt the energy drain out because you're pumped up to try to keep these third graders engaged and not experienced in that. If it wasn't for Mrs. Malone helping me, I would have been out of control. But the lesson for me is you really have to appreciate the teachers and the staff that we have in this county. And Mr. Fitzgerald said it best. Is bar none, it's the greatest school system ever. And I watched all these young people, and I watched Kayla, who would say, like, count one, two, three. She had some witty saying, and they would just fall in line. And I'm saying, please stop, stop. <laughs> I mean, we have a talented workforce in this county, and we should all be very appreciative of that. All the folks that are watching this should be very thankful that we have who we have and graduate the students we graduate because they go on to do great things. So thank you all very much. And with that, we're adjourned.